If you're physically able, if you'll stand with me for the reading of the word of God. I wasn't awake, I am now. (laughs) Amen. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 to 31. Matthew 14, verses 22 to 31. If you're there, say amen. The word says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him, and said to him, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your presence in this place of worship. And Father, we're grateful that you have said that you've given us all a measure of faith. So Father, we just pray that you have your way in this service, that you speak to your people. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that I pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, in the book of 2 Timothy 4 and 7, the word says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Hebrews 10 and 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This verse here in Hebrews is very powerful. And it is quoted in three other places uh, almost exactly the same way in the word. It must become an established fact in your life and my life that faith is not an option. You may be a person with great imagination. You may uh, imagine yourself in the most blessed and prosperous of circumstances. But the Bible says without faith in God, you are on your own. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it says you cannot please God. How did you get saved? The Bible says in Ephesians that you're saved by grace through faith. Grace is a provision. Faith is what appropriates that provision. Amen? Amen. 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 The whole Christian life is birth, sustained, and multiplied through faith. We are saved by faith. We are kept by faith. We are healed by faith. We are filled by faith. 
We are sanctified by faith. We are justified by faith. We are delivered by faith. And we overcome by faith. Is there anybody in the house that has some faith? Amen. 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 1 John 5 and 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The pastor's preaching. Amen. The Bible says, let me say something very elementary here. If you don't please God... Uh, it's going to be rough. Amen? Most people judge each other by what they possess. In other words, they judge each other by their possessions. Most people think that if you have a lot of stuff, then you must be really be doing it right. And that you must be really close to God. Sorry, that's the wrong answer. God doesn't look at any of that. To validate a relationship with him. He only looks for one thing. True, heaven approved, Bible faith. True, heaven approved faith is not optional. It is not positive thinking, creative thinking, active imagination. These are all great things of themselves. But they won't save you. They won't deliver you. They won't sanctify you. And they sure won't justify you. Let me make uh, uh, as plain as I can. Without a true biblical Holy Spirit approved faith, you're not going to make it. Turn and tell your neighbor, you need to have some faith. You could be the great, great granddaughter of some great man of God. Uh, I mean, woman of God or man of God. But if you don't have a personal, living, active, working faith, you're not going to make it. You may be the most uh, uh, faithful uh, attender, the biggest giver at the church. But if your faith is not active, all you have is a shout, but you ain't got no clout. Come on, somebody. If faith is so necessary, it has to be available to every one of us. God will not, will not require something from us without first assuring that we can get what he is requiring of us. Where do we uh, go to get faith that we can live by that pleases God? Where? Where? And the answer is in the book of Romans 10 and 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Our our first scripture says the just shall live by faith. The only life that pleases God is a life that is lived in the faith of what God has said. That's what's important. It's not important about what I say or what the news says or what Dr. Phil says. What matters is what thus saith the Lord. You may have high and lofty thoughts about many things in your life, but those thoughts won't bring you into a good standing with God. Amen? You may be a a morally good person who tries to live a a uh, life that is kind and considerate, but, the, but that also will not do it. The only way to stand upright in the sight of God is by faith in what he has said and what his word is still saying. The title of my text today, and uh, the, the reason I... I, I Gave it uh, the name I did is for one reason. We start off real strong, right? When we first get saved, we're real strong. We're real strong in things of God. But as time wanes on, some of us get a little weaker. We get a little drier. We don't, uh, we're not as active. Uh, We're not involved in the church. We don't come to church. 
Oh, I, need, I don't need to come uh, on Wednesdays. That's just for uh, young Christians. What if the word that God has for you is on a Wednesday? Oh, I don't need to be involved in the church. Uh, let me leave it to the other 23 people that are doing everything. Come on, somebody. Am I talking to anybody? So my whole point is, we want to finish strong. Turn and tell your neighbor, you need to finish strong. That's the title of the text, finishing strong. I don't care if you've been saved a week, a year, nine years, ten years, whatever. We need to finish strong. Isn't it funny when you're in the world? I know how I grew up in the world. You know, you thought you were all tough, all bad. Come on, Jesse, talk to me. And... uh but the thing about it is, when we become Christians, we become little wimps. But Paul said, don't get weary in well-doing, for in due season, or at the right time, you'll reap if you faint not. In other words, we have to have, I'm not giving up spirit, right? I'm not giving up, amen, amen, amen. If faith can come, Faith can also go. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. But faith leaves by hearing the wrong words and negative words. Words of fear. Words of doubt. Words of unbelief. It's very important what you're feeding into your head. What you're listening to. Who you're hanging around with. Bad company corrupts good character. So if you're with people that are negative... What are you going to be speaking? Negative. But if you're hanging out with people that are filled with the word of God, filled with prayer, how are you going to be acting? You're going to be a water walker. Amen. Amen. See, faith is like fire and it requires wood uh, to burn. But it's our responsibility to keep the fire burning. It's not Pastor Victor's responsibility to keep the fire burning in you. It's your responsibility. Yours. But we don't want to be responsible. That's a terrible word. But Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England during World War II, said this, the price of greatness is responsibility. We need to be responsible. Amen? Amen. Amen. In other words, we have to feed the flame of faith in our own lives. And if we don't feed the flame, it's going to go out. So faith can weaken, uh, dissipate, evaporate, not just from hearing the wrong words, but also from just plain, old, simple neglect. See, nobody likes the word discipline. To get into shape, you got to go to the gym consistently. Discipline. You got to put the Twinkies down. This is almost sin, but put the tortillas down. <laughs> it's a holy ghost. And and the same thing goes spiritually. I took a class in Bible college. It was called spiritual discipline. And it talked about how you have to discipline yourself to read the word. God ain't going to force you. He ain't going to come down and say, you got to read the Bible, dummy. No, you got to do it. Turn and tell your neighbor, just do it. Just do it. God ain't going to tell you to pray. You know, he, he's not going to force you to pray. You got to make a conscious decision to pray, to believe God. Having done all to stand to stand. You know, I, 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 I got up real early. And it was about 4 o'clock. And I put on uh, a Pandora, the gospel, on my phone. And just started praying. Because uh, who wants to be up out here without God? Amen? Hebrews 2 and 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at first begins to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. See, you can either feed your faith 
and fuel the fire of your faith with the word of God, or you can overwhelm your faith and bury your faith with negativity, with fear, with doubt, with worry, with anxiety, with worldly input, and just plain old neglect. Amen? See, it's a dangerous thing to lose your faith. On that great judgment day, Jesus is not going to ask you, oh, what kind of car did you drive, Mike? What accomplishments did you have? He's going to ask me one thing. Boy, where's your faith? And this is going to sound very elementary, but I have to say it. Your faith in God is under attack today like never before. The devil knows that the only people on this planet that he has to worry about at all are people of faith. When I say people of faith, I'm not referring to anyone who believes any old thing. I mean true Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-approved saints of God. Amen? See, you can, you know, and, and I, it's, it's sort of funny because Christians have a hard time of seeing themselves as saints because they think saints means you're perfect, and it doesn't. Saints means set apart. That's all it means. I remember I was born and raised a Roman Catholic. I uh, went to Catholic school right there in the Barrio in Pomona. Sacred Heart. And I remember when I got saved, after church I'd go to my mom and dad. And they were still going to a Catholic church. And I told my mom, Mom, did you know I was a saint now? She looked at me and she goes, Ay, mijo. Like this boy really, he really like, uh, I said, well, you don't get it now, but you'll get it. But, you know, praise God, my mother and my stepdad are in heaven because they both accepted Christ. Amen. 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 See, you can't just choose to believe any old thing and call yourself a believer. Well, let me back up on that a little bit. You can just choose to believe anything and call yourself a Bible-believing believer. But if what you're believing isn't proceeding out of the mouth of God, you're deceived. You're believing a lie, and you will die believing a lie. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What happened to Peter? The plain, simple truth is he ran out of gas. He ran out of faith. And uh, when Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, he didn't mean small faith, like, you know, a small amount. He didn't mean that at all. He meant that his faith was uh, temporal. It wasn't permanent. Amen? See, it must have taken strong faith to do what, what Peter did. But Jesus meant short term. It was very short term faith. In other words, when you put gas in your tank, if you only put $5 in it, you're not going to go very far. Amen? And you have little faith. Well, that doesn't mean that the gas you got was weak. It just means you didn't get very much. So you're not going to go very far. So Peter ran out of gas. And he ran out of faith. And the faith he has was strong, but he only had five bucks worth of faith. How much faith do you have? And there's only one way you get faith. And there's only one way uh, uh, that you uh, uh, sustain it. And that is by being in the word of God. By being in the word of God. Not watching Dr. Phil or Oprah or one of the novellas on TV. See, you all gave yourself up right there. <laughs> Amen. So Peter ran out of gas. So how do you run out of faith? The same way you run out of gas. 
you didn't go to the filling station. And if your car still runs on gasoline, it doesn't matter how good your mileage is, eventually uh, you will have to go to the filling station. You know what? A lot of times in life, people, anybody in here been through something? There, there'll be times in your life, and if you haven't been through anything, just keep living. <laughs> the thing about it is you go through things in life, and it's better to be prepared than not prepared. It's better to have your faith up instead of down. See, sometimes you can't look to other people. You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what you need to do. You need to believe for yourself. Amen? You need to go to the filling station. You can gripe about it. You can whine about it. You can talk about what a pain in the neck and inconvenience it is to go to the gas station. People don't like to pray. They don't like to invest in things of God. They don't like to uh, spend time in the word of God. But how are you going to know God? How are you going to trust him if you don't know him? Right? But if you don't go to the gas station and put gas in your car, you're going to run out of gas. Your unwillingness to deal with the inconvenience of putting gas in your car could leave you stranded and in the middle of nowhere. It's an, inter, uh, it's an interesting thought to me that Jesus is the author of our faith and the finisher of our faith. But check this out. But he makes us responsible for getting faith and staying full of faith. It's your responsibility. Amen? If I go out to my car tomorrow and it's out of gas, it's not the gas station's fault or the gas pump's fault. It will be my fault. And I know where the gas is and I know how to get it in my tank. So if I get lazy and don't take care of my business and I run out of gas in the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to yell at the gas station or kick the car. I'm going to kick myself because that's my responsibility. And the reality is life is not always easy. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I said, life is not always easy. And then you add that we have an enemy, and that makes things even worse. Amen? You know, some people say that the only power the devil has is deception, but I beg to differ. The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But it don't stop there. But Jesus... That's your victory, amen, in Christ. The devil is bigger than Michael Tafoya. What? I'm not done yet. But it's not bigger than the God in Mike Tafoya. For my Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We are told in the Bible to fight the good fight of faith. There are some faith uh, battles that are small and short-lived. And there's some faith battles that are huge. There's battles in your life that are going to be intense and long-lasting. And it takes more gas to go uphill than level driving. And there are some things in life that take more faith than others. And it can drain your faith tank very quickly. You may think you have plenty in the tank. Then you hit those hard places and it just sucks the tank dry. That's what happened to Peter. He thought he had plenty of faith in the tank. But when he got on the water and he saw the wind and waves, suddenly he realized the tank was empty. What happened to Peter? Why did he almost drown with Jesus right there? The answer is the same for us as it was for Peter. He let his tank go empty. Have you let your faith tank go empty? To some people, 
I guess I've already been religious one time in my life. So when I got saved, I didn't desire to be religious again. But for some to be a Christian is to come to church on Sundays, to show up, and that's it. But to have a real, vibrant, living relationship with Jesus Christ, that's an honor. That's a blessing. Do you realize? I'm not talking about the president. I'm not talking about the pope. I'm saying for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his very best because he loved you. Amen? So anytime you feel entitled or you think you're doing God a favor by coming, get a reality check. Amen? Turn and tell your neighbor, get a reality check. You know, the phrase is really saying more than meets the eye. It says when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He went by his senses. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? The word saw really embraces all the senses. He heard, he saw, he felt. He heard the wind blowing violently. He saw the waves rise and crash. He felt the wind blowing and the water hitting his face. But he wasn't supposed to go by what he felt. Now we can understand how real this situation was. His faith was under attack. And that may be you today. You may feel just like Peter. You feel, you hear, you see, and everything is negative. There's not one simple, positive, encouraging thing presenting itself to your senses. And that's where Peter was. He was on the water. He was in the middle place between faith and the senses. But let me tell you something. You're going to have to sometimes go through a wilderness. You're going to have to have a detour in your life sometimes. You're going to hit some potholes. But let me tell you something. That's because you're on your way to your promised land. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. You got to go through stuff. But there's always a blessing on the other side. Amen? Peter's senses were overwhelming his faith. Do you know why? Because he got his eyes off the word. His eyes were on Jesus. And the Bible says that Peter walked on water. Peter walked, not just Jesus. But when he got his eyes off Jesus, what happened? He sunk. And the same thing happens with us in life. When we get our eyes off the Lord... When we stop praying, when we stop uh, reading the word, studying to show yourself or prove, when we stop those things, we start to sing. We start to act real worldly. We're no uh, longer gossiping. I mean, we're no, longer, we're no longer praying for people. We're now gossiping or backbiting instead of praying for folks. When Peter saw all that was happening in the natural realm of his senses, he ran out of gas. He ran out of faith. And as long as Peter had his eyes on Jesus, who is the word, he was able to walk on the water. He was able to put what was over his head under his feet. But when his focus shifted from the word to the world, the world rushed in. The winds, the waves, the noise, and he started to sink. Maybe you're here today, and maybe you're going through something, but you feel like you're sinking. You don't need to sink. You can go over. You were meant to go under. You were meant to go over. My Bible says that you are more, somebody say more, more. than a conqueror. That you're an overcomer. That you're a winner. 
that you're blessing the city and you're blessing the country. That you're blessed going in and coming out. Amen? Amen. Turn and tell your neighbor, you're going to make it. Proverbs 27 and 23 says, Be diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. Amen. Amen. In other words, pay attention to your gas gauge. It's there for a reason. The point is, you don't have to run out of gas. God wants you to finish strong. God has provided everything you need to keep a full tank. Peter feared. When faith ran out, fear rushed in. And the Bible says he began to sink. You know, the Bible says that do we fear? Yes. But that's a decision you have made. We don't have the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. That's what you have. You don't have the spirit of fear. Amen. You see, it was his faith in the word that was holding him up. But when he got his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. He got to the station as quick as he could. He got his, back, his eyes back on Jesus and cried out to him. So let me ask you. Are you crying out to the Lord? Are you saying, Lord, save me? Well, the Lord wants you to know that he's there for you. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. He also said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Did you get that? Amen. Proverbs 107 and 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I know it's going to sound elementary and oversimplified, but if you feel like you're sinking, that you're struggling, that you're running out of gas, you need to get to the filling station as fast as you can. And you have to get back to the word. I said you have to get back to the word. You need to start building up a reserve. See, faith can grow. And faith should grow. Your faith and my faith shouldn't be running out. It should be growing and growing and multiplying. And praise God, Peter didn't, didn't sink, but he learned a lesson. And he learned a lesson about faith. Sometimes we can be a little stubborn. And we have to learn things the hard way. Peter learned a powerful lesson on how to protect your faith and how to protect your focus. And Peter became a great apostle with signs and wonders. The Bible says that even his shadow passed over the sick and the disease, and the demon possessed and oppressed, and they were healed and they were delivered. See, Peter had a shaky start on his faith journey, but he finished strong. Paul the Apostle finished strong. Jesus Christ finished strong. It doesn't matter how many times you fall down or start to sink, you can get back up again. This morning when I was getting ready, I, on DirecTV they have a gospel channel. And I was listening to the gospel singer Donnie McClurkin. And he was singing that song, We Fall Down, But We Get Up. A failure is not somebody who falls down. A failure is somebody that stays down. We fall down, but we get up. Is there any get up people in the house today? What I'm here to tell you is the devil will consume you with guilt, with condemnation, and everything else. But you need to talk back to that liar. You need to tell him, my Bible says in the book of Romans, there is now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
I don't have to take any guilt because Jesus Christ took it at Golgotha for me. But what I can say is, and don't make me start singing that song, okay? Because I might fool around and start singing. Amen. Amen. Even Samson, as crazy and turbulent and chaotic his life was, he finished strong. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischievous. I love this scripture because it tells me no matter how many times you have blown it, if you have fallen down, you can get back up again and finish strong. Amen. 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 You may feel like Peter and like you have fallen down and that you had a faith failure and you ran out of gas. Well, you can get back up again. Now, I want you to get this. Failure is an event. It's not who you are. I hear people say, well, I'm a dope addict. No, no you're not. That's what you do. That's not who you are. Failure is an event. It's not who you are. Who are you? You're the apple of his eye. Who are you? You're an overcomer. Who are you? Precious enough that if you were the only one living, he would have went to that cross and died for you. My Bible says that he who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin. That you would be the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ. You're the righteousness of God. Some of you can't handle that. But you are. It's not based on you. It's based on him. Somebody needs to say amen. 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 Like I said, failure... All it is is an event. It's not who you are. Micah 7 and 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemies, when I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be a light unto me. Have I ever fallen? Just a, just a <laughs> few minutes ago. See, I really did that so I could go with the message, okay? <laughs> It just, uh, yeah, it just, you know, you, you, you ain't so cool when you're falling down. <laughs> I was cool when I walked in the door, and then I tripped on the cord, and I fell down, and I said, well, there goes all the coolness. Amen. <laughs> That's all right. Jesus can give me some more. Right. Amen? Right. See, and being a failure is getting up one more time than you've fallen down. A failure is only somebody that stays down. Don't stay down. Amen? Amen. See, I'm not giving up. I'm getting up. And I'm going to finish strong. I want to know, are y'all giving up or getting up? That's right. That's right. My best days, your best days, are yet to come. He has saved the best for last. You haven't seen anything yet. You're smarter than you used to be. Somebody should have said amen. amen. I've been through some stuff. I said I've been through some stuff. Anybody been through something? Amen. And let me tell you what. It ain't the little things. They're bad enough. But when all hell breaks loose in your life and you're discombobulated and you don't know if you're going or coming, if you have built up your faith, it's going to be there to bring you through. Can I get an amen? amen? See, I've learned how to walk by faith and not by sight. 
I've had some faith victories under my belt. You know, we can get uh, so focused on Peter and Jesus here that we completely forget that there was 11 other disciples who never left the boat. They never put their faith to work. They heard the same words Peter heard, but Peter personalized it. Bid me to come. They never got a water walking testimony. They had a testimony. It went like this. We know a water walker. We saw him walk on water. Friends, you may be in the middle of a storm today. And you may think that people are just watching you fight, struggle, and falter. And you may feel like your faith is so weak that you're barely making it. And that you could barely hope to help anybody again in your life. But I promise you, you have an audience. Somebody is watching you. And they're learning. And they're taking notes. Not because you're perfect, not because you got everything just right, but because you finished strong. And because you finished strong, somebody that would never, ever, who would never, ever try to leave the boat will now try to leave because of you. And they're going to become water walkers too. And they too will finish strong. I had a very difficult heartbreaking situation that I went through many years ago. It was disheartening. It really uh, shook me up. And I had a great opportunity to become offended, resentful, bitter, and I wanted to be all of the above. But God helped me. I said, but God helped me. Amen. And because he helped me, I stayed the course. And I didn't sink in that pit. And a couple of years later, a very respectable gentleman, a man of God that I knew and love, went through something of a similar nature. And he told me something. He said, uh, my family watched how you went through. That fiery trial in your life. And it really helped us to get through ours. And to not get bitter, but get back up and finish strong. Friends, it's not about you. Somebody else is going to make it because you finish strong. It doesn't matter how shaky your start has been or how many times you have blown it. What matters is that you get back up again and finish strong. You need to understand something. God is for you. God is with you. And you can do this. In Jesus' name. You can make it. My Bible says that that you can do all things. Not some things, not easy things, but all things through Christ who strengthens you. Realize who your strength is. We're going to have an altar call, but we're not going to come forward. You acknowledge the call by standing up. Salter calls for people that want to finish strong. Not might want to finish strong, but who are going to finish strong. So, if that's you, then stand in Jesus' name and we'll pray.
loves you. But preacher, you know, God really loves you. But I, I, I did this. I missed it. God really loves you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have a desire in the depths of my being to finish strong, to finish real strong. I have a deep desire to get into the Word of God, to study show myself approved I have a deep desire to be a man or woman a prayer to be active in my church to be a positive input in my church Father your word says by the renewing of my mind with the word of God. So Father, today I believe that you've heard me. I believe that I'm going to finish strong for the glory of God. It's in Jesus Christ's name. that I trip and fall for, okay? So having said that, God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a great day.